Expo. I hope y'all are learning a lot in this epic seminar uh, program that they made this year. It's so many, and it's great. And now we're getting into some deep diving in 007, the new James Bond by George Gomez and team. And we have the legendary Lonnie Rapp with us. And then the just as legendary, almost as legendary as Lonnie, but he's working towards it, Mike Vitacore. <laughs> On my w on my way to legendary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, is your mic? Yeah. How's your mic working? So yeah, go ahead. Can you ahead guys hear me okay? I can't hear myself so good, but it might just be my age. I'm <laughs> I'm pretty sure everyone is very familiar with both of y'all's work in this room. But for those who aren't, because we do have a lot of new people in a pinball, can y'all give kind of like a brief, very brief history of your work in the pinball industry? Very brief history of your work. Uh, we'll go with start with Lonnie first. Wow. Okay, hi everybody. <laughs> um, hi, hi, Tanya. Uh, they gave me a glass of water because I talk too much. <laughs> so maybe I shouldn't be the first one to go here. But so I, uh, sometimes I'm not too brief. Um, so yeah, uh, I've been making pinball games for um, Data East, Sega, and Stern Pinball um, for a lot of years. 1986 was uh, when we first got started doing th this fun stuff. Um, and so, um, I'll just make it fast, when uh, we give tours at the, or at the factory, or people ask me uh, about what I do, and how, I, you know, um, uh, what games have you worked on, and what is your favorite game, and how many games have you, have you made? And I go, well, um, if my game is on the line at that moment, I go, the first one, the last one, and, and many in between. <laughs> and so uh, uh, Laser War was uh, the company's first game. Um, they came to um, Incredible Technologies as a video game programmer there uh, for IT. We know IT with uh, uh, all the work that they've done with their, uh, um, their games. And uh, they, we were a software arm for uh, Data East Pinball for those first uh, years. And um, eventually, five years later, um, that company almost went out of business, and Joe Kamencode called me up and said, hey, come uh, uh, work for us, not as a contractor, but as an employee, and that was in 1991, so. You have the distinction of you've programmed more pinball machines than anybody on planet Earth. Well, I, I guess that's true. It is totally true. <laughs> um, so that could be a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, the uh, the good thing is I've got to I've had the opportunity to work on a lot of different games. Um, pinball goes through cycles, uh, economic cycles, and uh, um, Stern has been able to survive all of the these years of the highs and the lows. We're in highs right now. This is a lot of fun uh, seeing all of the um, games. Uh, that are being created and uh, that we're making a lot of all you folks that are here. I've I've sat in this room before and it's like um, it's <laughs> the folks from work and that's about it. Uh, and uh, and so uh, it's really encouraging to uh, um, uh, to make something uh, that people enjoy and play. And uh, so that's what we do. I'll try to be brief. You, you, you take the next one. All right. I'll spare you the long version of my origin story because I've told it at a bunch of these shows. But um, I started in the industry at Williams Valley Midway in 1994. But I started on the video side. So I worked on Mortal, all those Mortal Kombat games. Um, and all the – I started in 94. So everything from Revolution X on until 2001, I worked on in some way, shape, or form. And then after that, I did video game console design for about nine years. And then when I was done with that, I was really burned out, and I'm like, I can't stay in uh, video games anymore. If I'm staying in the industry, it's got to be pinball, because that was my first love anyway. Like, as soon as I could reach the flipper buttons, my dad used to take me to go play pinball at our local arcade. So uh, fast forward a few years from that, and I got my wish, and now this is the tail end of my sixth. January will be, in the middle of January, will be my seventh year anniversary at Stern. And, um, and I hopefully be here for the rest of my life, because it's the best job I've had in my almost 30 years in the industry. Um, I started at Stern. Uh, the first projects I worked on were Batman and Aerosmith. So Aerosmith was the first time Lonnie and I ever worked together. And Lonnie was one of the few people 
in our department that didn't already know me. So um, we got to know each other pretty good by the end of that game. And now we've done, together, him and I have done, this bond is our fifth game together. But it's the first time we've done a panel together in seven years. So um, I really like working on games with him because I think our strengths really complement each other. And, uh, and I'm really proud of the work that we've done, not just on bond, but on the other four games we did together too. Awesome. Well, speaking of Bond, like, give us a little bit about what that project was like, um, working with George Gomez and the rest of the team. Who else worked on it with y'all? And um, kind of like how it's progressed from when it was first uh, released last year to, you know, all the, the code updates to where we are now. You know, the game is super shining now, and you guys are excited to, to dive deep into it in a second here. But let's hear about that that process with this project? Um, Bond was an interesting project in the fact that it was started by a, a different game designer who then left the company and all that work was scrapped and then George Gomez took over the project and started with a clean slate, the whole new play field. Um, so then, I, then he and Lonnie and the mechanical engineers were on that game before I was and I started on it right about the time we got the first Whitewood, I think, right? The first George Whitewood. Then George brought me on to tag back up with Lonnie, um, and then we, Lonnie and I, have been working on the, you know, the game rules, and he's been programming the thing ever since. Um, so we shipped it back. It was like a year ago, right? It was right before this expo last year. Yeah, yeah. Right yeah. when the Queen passed away. Right, right. So, yeah. So like the unveiling got a little delayed, um, and then he and I have been working on it, you know, ever since, and we're getting close to the finish line at this point. Um, we still, but we still got a lot more fun stuff to put in there. Yeah, it's too bad that George is not here um, because George um, knows more about Bond um, IP than uh, Mike and I and everybody in this room will forget. I mean, he, he's, he'll forget more than uh, we'll ever know. Um, it's, and, and so on this project, um, as as people work on, like the last team that was up here, there were like eight or ten people up here, and that's a lot of folks contributing to uh, and wanting to get their ideas into a game, uh, because it's like, oh, that's that's kind of it's you know, th it's fun. You invented it; it's an accolade for you. On this project, um, because of George George's intimacy with uh, that that project, for me, that was his holy grail pinball game. So whenever somebody says, ask, what's your favorite game? For me, and, he, and George won't say it, but that is his favorite theme of all time, ever, forever. Yeah, b Bond to George is like Star Wars is to me and people of, you know, my, around my age. Like, so that was his absolute favorite thing. His, he's got vivid memories of, like, seeing the, this first Bond movie in the theater, and you can tell you the exactly the whole details of that whole day and the toys that he had when he was a kid that were James Bond toys. Uh, and it, when I hear him tell that story, it's like me talking about Star Wars in the 70s. Yeah, exactly. And he was a you know toy designer and he uh, at uh, Marvin Glass, George was, and uh, some of his heroes who made toys of, that he played with when he was a kid still worked there. And oh, those toys are upstairs in the attic. Let's go look at them. Uh, I mean, you know, like, uh, you know, boxes of them because that's what they, they always stored them. Any event, um, so my rationale on this game was a little different. Um, it, wasn't a, it wasn't about, um, I want, well, well you'll probably, you're probably gonna hear this from Mike and uh, Mike say it about me, but um, uh, I always want the game, the game is organic that we make. It tells you if what you're doing is right or wrong. So that combined with, I'm just gonna defer to George on the IP, on the intellectual property, because I, I, I would be doing a disservice. We would be doing a disservice to the game. For sure, yeah, because he knows do way that. more than we are. And know. as it turns out, we would, he would be, in, I would sit in meetings with him with the, with the, uh, the intellectual property folks and he would be, be bringing up ideas of things that we can do that they, uh, of their property, of the things that they owned, that they didn't know about. And, and 
or I mean, th in the graphics department, we would show them graphics that we created, and they think that those graphics were from their IP, uh, and said, "You, you know, you that that looks really good. Where did you get that? We created that, right?" And so it was George driving that for for us, and um, um, so that was the. And the second biggest Pond fan I've ever met in my entire life is Kevin O'Connor, who did all the the cabinet and back glass art for this game too like between him and george it's like you know again picture the two biggest star wars fans in the world but apply it to james bond it's those two guys and and then and uh uh imagine this what you do what you know um, <laughs> what i'm about to tell you when you're met with a sea of no there's a lot of things we, we, we can't always do, and it's not, a, it's not a, against the bond licensing folks, it's any, any licensor, it's their IP. They own it, it's theirs. You, you don't mess with yeah. uh, folks. You're, you're allowed to use it and borrow it, and, 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 uh, uh, and hopefully it's a partnership that we can make, you know, make it work. And so we, uh, Kevin and um, um, George, Working with uh, work, working with licensor, it was it was it was hard. And so what you see here is really, I don't want to call it a labor of love because it's times a hundred uh, to to get there. The art package, uh, everything that's everything that you see in that game here, the music, the speech, uh, every pixel, every piece of artwork that's on there uh, was scrutinized. Um, I I always said that uh, Star Wars uh, is delight in here. Uh, I always said that uh, s the Star Wars license was our t was our toughest license, but I think this one was, um, at least for at least it was for me. Yeah. So, uh, oh, by the way, I don't think we just mentioned at the beginning. If you guys have questions, raise your hand. We'll, we won't wait till the end. We'll take them throughout. And it and when we're at the end of the show, we'll pick our f favorite two or three questions, and there might be prizes for you guys. So, um, prizes so think for of some the good best ones. question. You want to trade most? Mo so you, you got a wireless, then you can go. Oh, questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take that one. I mean, okay. you take this one. Here's a musical mic. Yeah, you got it. I'll scoot over. Hello. <laughs> oh, a quick question already. Yeah, go ahead. What were you guys trying to do with Bond that they didn't let you do? Um, we can't really go into many details. Yeah. I mean, can you guys hear me on this microphone okay? Because I just switched. Okay. Um, I can't give you any specifics, you know, because I love my job. But um, no, I could I could give you one. No, that, no, that, that don't. No, no, don't it's, it's, it's okay. But uh, let's suffice it to say, every licensor has their yeah. any licensor has their own rules of how you can work yeah. with their property. How you present? How yeah. you present their? They're like, their we IP. want you to do these things. Here's things you can do. Here's things you can't do. Here's things that we like. Here's things you can use. Whatnot. Yeah. So every there's no two the same. Yeah. Just like there's yeah. no two songs the same from any you know unless you're ACDC, then they all sound the same. <laughs> but um, but that's not a bad thing. I love ACDC. Yeah. You, know, you stick with what works. But you know what I mean. Everything's different, so you just have to play within the sandbox they give you. Yeah. I wasn't in on those talks, but I could see that being a thing, you know, for sure. Um, go ahead. Don't tell. Uh, don't, don't I guess tell. he. I guess. <laughs> I guess he's saying don't tell. Yeah, no. There, you know, the, we we have a, a huge respect for uh, for for everybody that's involved because they're our partners. Without them. We're not ma sitting here having this conversation, right? So you're not going to throw your your uh, spouse under the yeah. you know, under under the bus. Right? Well, I mean, my former spouse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you have a question? Yeah, so what's the right, you know, using the character? Right. So it, again, no two are the same, but this game. Um, we were able to use many of the movie clips, um, you know, again, within the guidelines that we're given. And then we created a lot of our own artwork, original artwork, too, for a lot of the award screens and such. such. For example, the, I guess, familiar with the martini shot that we added in the last code update? So that martini animation was all created in-house by Chuck Ernst and his team. In, in every title, when like when you do a licensed product, like you have to send things for approval. You're like, this is what we want to do. Is this okay? And they come back and they go, yes or no. And if they s if there's a no, they'll tell you why. And then we just work. You know, we just work until we get it to where everybody's happy. Uh, can I just say something? So I've worked with this licensor myself. Um, you may not know this, but the bond, the rights to James Bond, have been through multiple court 
battles over the years as to who owns what. And this licensor are very specific about how they use them and how they don't use them within the remit of that license. So this, the fact that this has been difficult for these guys doesn't surprise me. But, it, but if you go read the history of James Bond from when Ian Fleming created the books to where it is now, you'll probably understand why they're a bit more, a bit more picky than, than perhaps other licensors are. By the way, third biggest Bond fan I know, Neil McRae. <laughs> <laughs> Um, All right, we got another question back here. I, I find it a little harder to start modes on this game, which can be frustrating but also rewarding when you do get them. So mm -hmm. I'm just wondering your process on balancing that difficulty so it's not too frustrating. But That's a really good question. Amodo, remember him because that's a candidate for sure. Um, so you know, I don't know if you played the last update we did. Was it a week ago? Maybe two? Yeah. Um, the last update we did, we made um, the the – the villains and the henchmen always be one shot away. Like, you know, they don't get any harder. It's just if you're not in a mode, one shot's going to take you there. And I pitched pretty hard for that one on the last update because we made it harder when the, at the beginning when there was less in the game. And then now that there's so much in the game, and I was – I even myself as a really good player, I'm like, man, it's, it kind of felt like a little bit of a grind to, like, to, to keep getting the modes. I'm like, i got to make three to make this, and then it was two. I'm like, I just want to be in modes all the time, like – they're spread out so nicely around the play field that there's always something I could start now, and I, I felt like it was the right way to go. And so Lonnie changed it on the last one, and I played it a bunch, and I, I really liked it. And I'm like, well, if it comes too easy, we can always make it harder again later. And there are settings for the people that did prefer it to be harder um, that you could change it. But the default, I think, is going to stick where it is now. And the feedback we've gotten has been very positive. Like, people like it a lot more because now they're seeing more of the game. And the two of us spend so much time making those modes. I want people to be in them and enjoying them as much as possible. Yeah, Mike. Thanks. Mike's right about that. It w the the last sentence that he said: there are 24 modes. You know, six villains, six henchmen, six specters, six Q branch modes. And the Q branches, four of them graduate into multi balls. You know, you know, there's this, there's so much stuff in this game. And someone who just walks up to the for the first time, or somebody who's a casual player. Um, you want them to experience uh, all of this cool stuff. If you make a couple of ramp shots, um, that side ramp is not the easiest shot in the world. It's it, uh, originally when we shipped it, it was one shot and uh, to start, and it was three shots to start a, a villain mode. And those eventually got uh, easier, shorter. And we even at some point we even made the villain harder. I'm sorry, the henchman harder. It was one one. One two two two. One one two two two. Then we went one one two two three three. Yeah, and, and then so uh, and then I got to be where it was just felt too hard once you got past the end of the twos. But as time went by, uh, and and I forget what the number is. There's like there's like forty plus uh, modes and multi balls and wizard modes and et cetera in this game, and they need to be accessible, and um, and the the thing I want to uh, that that's important. Um, for, for you folks to hear is everything that you uh, you hear today um, applies to James Bond. We bring all the knowledge that we have from previous games. The next game, it might be three shots to start that, that mode. Brian Eddy is in the back. Uh, uh, we did a, a game, we did the, the, my previous game was with Brian. The, it's three shots. <laughs> to start a mode and uh and and on that game and that play field and organically it works yeah the, uh, the, the geometry on bond is a little bit the shots are a little bit more challenging like they were uh, they were more accessible on brian's design for stranger things which is why the threes work so well because that game you're like when you're on you're making shots all day and bond it's like you know you got to be a little bit more deliberate because the shots are farther out on the play field or ones on the side ramp, you know. So yeah. the shots that started those features were harder. So then that the game, like Lonnie always has a say, and the game will tell you if it's good or not. And he's totally right. And I use that that catchphrase with everything. Um, the game told us this is a little too hard with that geometry, and so like we kept dialing yeah. it back until well, we got it to where it was accessible. I mean, if you think about it, there are nine shots on this play field. The two shots on the side, the uh, the DB5 and the power pack, the lefty eject. Um, they're hard shots, and now yeah, there's an upper play field, upper flipper shot, side ramp and a side loop. They're hard. Okay, so that means uh, four out of your nine shots are hard to make, and uh, so if you're going to uh, 
try to get the game, the player engaged with the game and, um, uh, and have fun, well, then you need to um, take that into account, those, those shots. In fact, you'll, you'll notice um, many of the modes do not use the left eject. Um, yeah, uh, and many of them don't use the side shots. Yeah, either. that's... that's and, and it was very deliberate that we put the super jackpots on the side ramp because the biggest payoff should have the hardest, you know, the biggest uh, yeah. risk. Um, so that's why, like, the multi-balls and the... And, and those wizard modes, like the final shots, typically the right ramp, I mean the side ramp. I'm, I'm going to do a segue here uh, uh, from, a, from a previous question about, um, the, 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 uh, I'll just talk about the bond women. Empowering women to help with the licensor, that hardest shot is the most valuable shot in the game. You get a 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x, 6x, 7x, and you could use it. That was Mike's idea. The, my idea was to do the, the two through five, and his was to put it on the, on the lockdown bar button that you could use at any time. Um, and it really helped sell. Um, when we did this feature, the licensor loved it because it, uh, it, 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 it's politically correct uh, thing to do. Um, and uh, and it's, it's a pinball thing to do because uh, it really makes the game it it it, uh, it it empowers the player and empowers the game and it's yeah. pretty pretty and, cool and speaking to what Lonnie was saying about which shots were harder and which ones were easier um, you know we introduced the smart missile in, in the last update the smart missile Lonnie made it actually really it, like legitimately smart where it's gonna help you with the hardest shots that are lit like you know it's got a pattern it likes to go through of based on what's available at the moment you press it, and it goes for in order, like basically in order to the difficulty. So if you're if you're in a mode and you're struggling, like I can't hit that side shot, you know that's lit with the upper, you have to with the upper flipper. Use your smart mil missile if you have it, and it'll make your life so much simpler. Plus, it lets you get into the game a little farther. Yeah. Um, I mean, people were like, oh, we can't, um, we're struggling, or. Uh, we can make it to uh, Bond, James Bond, and the first wizard mode, and that's about it. So now, I mean, literally, with this ad with this addition, we're seeing folks get to, like, their second, third uh, wizard mode um, uh, in the game. There, were, there are, um, yeah. And, and also, now that you've got smart missiles, those um, Q branch ones that become multi-balls, so each one of those has a risk and reward factor in the single ball play, where you're building up the value of not only your next shot to advance to the multi-ball, but that same value gets applied to your jackpots when you make it to the multi-ball. So now that you get the smart missile, like take advantage of like take shooting the shots that are just the building shots while you've got time left on your timer, and uh, and you can make then you can when you get the multi-ball started, which at the end you use a smart missile to help advance you to, you could walk out of each one of those Q branch multi-balls with, with like you could break a billion out of each one of them. L let me ask a question here, because uh, you're, you're supposed to be answer, answer, uh, asking us questions. How many people here have played a pinball machine where you make one shot and you get a billion points? <laughs> Is there? Okay. Well, Which, so Brian raises his hand, but Brian made one of those. I, 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 a, I understand. I, I understand. I think you got a billion I, points for I, plunging on attack I, from Mars. I understand. <laughs> it is really <laughs> gratifying when you set up a play field feature to do, to do something, and then when you hit that thing and, and you see a billion points flash on the screen. Wait, Brian did two of them because <laughs> there was a billion shot on Brian yeah, and Pinball. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was the first it's, billion shot. Right. It's just so, so, so thank you, Brian, for a billion point yeah. shot. Thank you for the extra uh, zeros, Brian. Yeah. <laughs> it, it really, it is. When you see that one comma and then followed by nine zeros or some, some digits, it's like, oh, my, this is really cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Yep. Uh, yeah, so, you, as, uh, again, a score balancing kind of question. Typically, you would, you know, do in-person or play testing that you guys are uh, watching people play or playing yourselves. But now with James Bond being one of the new generations of Stern Insider Connected being packed in with the game, you're getting a whole bunch of uh, analytics, I'm assuming, about what uh, degree of points people are getting uh, and how is that influencing you now and where people are reaching in the game based on what you're getting the information from uh, Insider Connected technology and 
all the analytics that's coming. And are you even getting that? And how much does that influence your balancing in the games moving you know, forward? Uh, ironically, I don't know how much of it we're getting like to the detail. But we do get some information from that. And certainly when we run on leaderboards, when you get leaderboards going, remember like we were doing monthly leaderboards? That gives us a great indication of like what are these players getting, right? Like what's the leaderboard look like? When I come to these shows, again, Emoto and I, we do like a, like close to 10 shows a year together. I travel with Marco um, as part of my job to do these shows. Um, we do a leaderboard at every one of these shows with all the games connected. So we, I see every, and, I, and I, I touch every game in some way in that w that's come out in the whole time I've been here. I think I've worked on 25 games. So um, it, it's been helpful at these shows. I can see how far people are getting when we just run leaderboards here. And we still play them ourselves all the time. And we've got some game testers back in the office um, that also, they're both very good players too. So, um, and then, you know, Gary just, I think Gary just walked in. Gary is a great bar barometer of like, where's the, where's the easier to get to things? Like, can, you know, where's the multi-ball for him, we like to say. Um, and my girlfriend's another one, like, um, I'll have her play a game, and I'll be like, Let's, I'm not even going to tell you how to play this. I want to just see what you can do in this thing. And Is she getting a multi-ball? Is she starting a mode? You know? So there's a lot of different variables we use to track that stuff. And then Lonnie and I, we, we'll have like many hour-long discussions um, about like where we think we should, how, what should we adjust and balance to get it to where it's fun for everybody and it feels fair. And there's not like one path that's like everybody's going to just play the game this way. Yeah, I want to. Like, how how many of you guys? Well, let, let, you know, what, I'll, let's ask the crowd that like how to to proceed for. Are you guys very familiar with the structure of the game, or do you want us to go over like here's how you start everything, and here's some stuff you might not know about the position? You guys want that? <laughs> the smart missiles will not light a bond woman for you. Yeah. Okay, they, won't they won't they won't collect them for you, no. Oh, I see what you're saying. So okay, so if you have both of them, right? If you've got uh, a multiplier ready like your button's pink, if you've got a smart missile, it's red. It will cycle if you've got them both that you can do either one. Every time you flip the flippers, that light will change either pink, red, pink. So you you know how you lane change the top lanes of the flippers? Think of the button exactly the same way. You lane change the feature on your button. So, so yeah, so if, if you know you've got both, but you want the smart missile and the button's pink, hit one of your flippers and it'll go to red. Yeah, we can show you. I'll show you on the thing too, yeah. Are you asking about the MXV Easter eggs? There will be. Well, if you're talking about like, the same MXV kill shot, there is one coming. It's not in there yet. But, you know, like Dwight puts Easter eggs in his games, like a button thing that tells you to spread it. Check, check. Hello. How long can we go? I mean, I'll hold it for you. I can hold it as long as it reaches. Oh, yeah. All right. Thank you, backhand pinball, Mark, for setting up this cool yeah, thank you so much, thing Mark. for us, for us to um, see. So I'll just give you the quick overview of like the structure like from when you hit start. So the villains are started on this right ramp. Everything's one shot away. So if you're not in a mode and you're not in a multi-ball, you hit the right ramp, you'll start whatever villain is flashing over here on these inserts. And then um, the pop bumpers will, will cycle through which one's lit and whichever one's flashing when you hit that ramp, you'll start. But the gold finger target, which is this target right here between the right orbit and the side ramp, each time you hit that, it will advance at one. So you can control which one you start. And that's the same for the villain and the henchman and the Q branch. The specter weapons, those are the, when you spell specter with the targets around the rocket here, the, the gold finger target's lit. 
and then these inserts around, these are the Spectre weapons, it's just start cycling. Is this not working? Oh, that, that, that's way better. Thank you. These will start cycling in a circle. And whenever, you, when it, and then when you, um, when you hit the gold finger target, you'll start whatever one is flashing. So you just time your shot if you're looking for a, a certain one you want to play. Wait for it's on there, and then hit the target. Then, um, each villain henchman, each villain and henchman mode, each one has its own unique rules, and most of them have a risk and reward factor where. You might see a flashing light and a solid light, and both of them will advance you, but the flashing light's worth more. And a mode like the Red Grant mode, that one you shoot the right orbit, and then it lights up like the combo shots. But on that particular mode, the right orbit is also, I mean, the side loop, you know, where the Bond women are, is one of the combo shots, and that is the only one that won't go out after you make it. And you can combo the entire mode in one combo, and that's the, the path of the biggest points in that one. Um, the, her, the Spectre weapon hurry-ups, there's some that have a, you know, where there's two shots lit. Either one will finish it, but the flashing one's worth double. Um, what are some other ones I'm missing? Like oh, yeah, yeah, the, the, the Spectre weapons, half of them, three of them are one shot, and the blinking shot is double, the, the, the solid shot. And then the uh, last three are um, yeah. uh, four shots with the exception of Outer Space Hijack, which is... That a one's a lot. Yeah. Um, but then coming soon, and I've talked about this in other streams, um, there will be perks. So when you do the Spectre weapons and you complete them, you'll get a perk that's going to last with you for the rest of the game. So, and depending on the difficulty of the Spectre weapon you just completed, you know, each one will have its own unique perk, and they're all going to be very valuable and well worth. You're going to want to be going for those to help you. Much like the smart missiles help you, there will be other, th other things, the perks that will help you get deeper into the game. Sure. Um, the bonus we're still working on, so the bonus points at the end are going to change pretty drastically, I would say. Yeah. Um, so we won't cover that now because it's not really correct, you know, in its current state. I, it will be very valuable. Like, we did this in Stranger Things, and we did it on Guardians. Um, finishing modes were, will play greatly into your end of the ball bonus. You know, so the more modes you actually completed versus just starting, it's going to be well worth your while to try to finish them, not just for getting smart missiles now because you get one for finishing. When you play, you don't have to finish them, but when you start one of each movie mo uh, thing, so one villain, one henchman, Spectre, and Q, you like that, the center movie insert solid, right? You don't have to finish them. You only have to have just played them. And um, when you have a movie, so when you finish all those movies, that's going to, the inserts in the middle, that'll be the final wizard mode, the be all and all, the, Majesty's Secret Service. But any one that of those center ones that you have lit solid, your Bond woman, that you, if you have the Bond woman for that movie lit solid and you didn't use her before you drain, normally you would lose her and you'd have to relight her and recollect her. You will keep that on a drain. So any, sol any movie insert in the middle, that Bond woman survives drain. So you could sit on that one and not wor risk losing it. So the risk and reward is still there, but you've got like this, now you've got this like get out of jail free card in a way, right? So I've got the Dr. No insert, and I've got the Dr. No Bond woman. I don't feel the pressure to use her or lose her. I can try to build the other ones up because I know that she'll survive the drain, and uh, she'll still be on the next one. And then, again, like those will play into the end of the ball bonus, too. Like the more solid ones you have will be more lucrative. Um, the, when you play a villain, a henchman, and each of the two multiballs, that's Bird One and Jetpack, you get Bond, James Bond. That's the closest to the start button mini wizard mode. That's a timed multi-ball. Um, and then you have to make the jackpots in the super before the time runs out, and uh, that thing is worth big points. But when you finish six of anything, so if you finish the whole tree of the villains, or the henchmen, or the Q, or the specter weapons, that's when the big mini wizard modes are lit. And you get to select which one you want by, again, just, what, what it, just like the modes, whatever's flashing on the right ramp when the wizard mode's collected, uh, qualified. That's the one you're going to play, and then the pops move it, and so does the gold finger target. So you don't have to, you could, you know, do, you could play the same way every time if, you, if you're really good at picking off the villains first, but you, every time you do it, it, you know, each game could be different because you've got four wizard modes to choose from. So you don't have to, it's not a linear path to the wizard modes. Um, it's what you get to choose your, your destiny. Each one of those, again, there's big risk and reward in those mini wizard modes too, and they're extremely lucrative. And they're very unique. I'm like, I'm really happy with those four wizard modes. The, the last one we put in, have you guys played that one? 
the duel on the Disco Volante where you time lock balls and it multiplies your jack, your super. Like that one might is quickly becoming my favorite one. I, I think that is the. Like it starts as that one that ball and it progresses to three. That is the best uh, uh, wizard mode on the game. Yeah, so on the, how that one works, you start at one ball, then you make shots, and then you lock a ball, ball and it adds one. And when you get to three balls, then the super gets lit. But you can just pick off the super for a single, you know, one X super. But all the lo all the lock devices are lit. Um, and each one that you time lock, it doubles, triples, quadruples the super jackpot. On the premium and the L uh, so on the pro, you can only lock two balls, so you can do a two x or a three x super. On the premium, you could lock five balls, so you put you you put two in the two e jacks left and right, and you can put three up the middle, and then you've got one play one on the play field. You make you make a six like a six x super, so that's a feature that's exclusive to the premium and the LA. along with your seven x. Yeah, and if you double that, well, yeah, you could get 6x plus 7x. So what, I'm, not, I'm not terrible at math. You're the programmer. That's 13, right? As yeah, a 13x. We, we can't give you, you, you 40, 13X We can't give you 42x. We've, um, <laughs> we went down we, that road on we, KISS. <laughs> we've, we've learned our lesson from previous games of uh, having uh, score and balancing. And so, so, yeah, the multipliers are added. They're not... Uh, is, is, is the power pack, that's the one with the white shots, right? That build? Pa like uh, underwater power pack. Underwater pa so on power pack, that's the Q1. That's the one where you have to make the five left ejects to get to the multi ball. But all those white shots, each one of those builds up your next orange shot and it builds up your super. And that one, I did it on a stream once and I had like a billion points because I made, you know, probably six or seven white shots before I made. The, the orange one, and now with the smart missiles, that's so much easier so to obtain. So there's a lot of points sitting out there. I, I actually want to talk about that mode a little bit um, because I think it's the controversial mode. It's like people are like, oh, we got to. Yeah, I have to make uh, that thing five times. I got to make this. I have to make this left eject. First of all, the history of that, of, of this play field, um, uh, I wish George was here. Um, the game would play itself with that left eject. The ball was going in there so frequently early on that we had to, George had to, uh, I don't want to say fix it, but detune it or do something organically. How do you stop a ball from going into a plate, in, you know, just going over there all the time? It was just constantly going in there. And, uh, uh, and, and it's, it's a shot that you can't shoot. Well, you can, but it is, it's, it's the hardest. It, it's, it's one of the hardest shots You can't, uh, 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 let's see, Keith or Ray or one of the best players, you're not, uh, you're not going to make that shot 100% of the time, every time, you, you know. Um, and, and so I, uh, on this game, uh, I have fought with, I mean, we, we have these conversations. Can you backhand it from the left? Can you, you know. Uh, um, oh, uh, so let, me, let me just interrupt you because you just, I want to, that's a tip. So here's two tips for that, making that left eject better uh, or more, more successfully. Yeah. Don't lift the flipper up, you know, the left flipper up when you're shooting it. It's not like Twilight Zone where it makes the, the what, was, what was that shot? Thank you, the camera. I used to own that, I, but I got rid of it long enough ago. I forgot. It, that, that, you know, you're like, my gut was to, oh, yeah, lift the flipper up. It's going to make that shot bigger, but it actually bounces out way more. Keep that flipper down, and, and the shot's way over on the tip. But if you thread it just right, you'll, it'll be like bam, bam, and it's straight in. But... You can backhand that scoop pretty easily off a very like I'll trap up and then I'll and I'll do a little tap to make it roll slowly up my raised flipper and then I'll just back I'll backhand and I can tap it in there and I've gotten really good at doing that. Huh. I'll try, yeah. I'm a little rusty, but now the now the pressure's on. <laughs> He'll get it. I hope Gary he, doesn't fire This looks like me at home trying to. I'll sit well, there. One miss. Oh, two miss. I see what you mean. Three miss. Yeah. Four misses. Five yeah, misses. Did it go in? Yay! Yeah. Woo! Did it? Is there we go. That was good. Okay. So there is. So, so, th so there's one more. There, there's one. There, this is, um, uh, let's see, <laughs> um, um, Mike and I uh, were good friends of Lyman, Lyman Sheets. We all know Lyman. Uh, and we've worked with him for, uh, um, actually, Lyman was instrumental in uh, Mike coming 
to, to work for us. And anyhow, um, <laughs> what I'm about to tell you is, is something that's happened on this game. Lyman's influenced b both Mike and I quite a bit um, in our uh, rule design and how we go about. Um, it, it was, he, I mean, he was instrumental in me working at Stern, and he was also the, my greatest influence because um, oh, he was a very close friend of mine. So I learned a lot from him, which yeah. uh, helped in this game tremendously. Yeah, and so I remember I worked on uh, a game, uh, Lyman's, you know, at work with us, and the, and the game is um, Rolling Stones, and and uh, the the term is Mick on a stick. You guys named him Mick on a stick, and Nick uh, and, and Mick is moving back and forth in one of the modes, and the and the and the idea was you would you would trap up with two balls, one on each flipper, you would flip the ball to. At Mick, he would move away temporarily so you could hit the shot behind him with the other with the other ball. That's the only way that you can score that super jackpot, right? Two balls, one on each flipper. Hit Mick with one of the balls. It would move out of the way temporarily and then move back. But before he moved back, you flip and hit the shot behind it to get the jackpot. I was so proud of myself when I came up with that idea. And then I showed Lyman. Lyman <laughs> takes the left flipper, ricochets it off of a side target, and, and, and banks it in to the super jackpot <laughs> without doing all of this elaborate stuff that I, that I had just set up, right? I'm like, oh, wow. So the, uh, uh, the, 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 the Lyman is with us. Yeah, the, so the, the risk and reward stuff that you have in there, that's all stuff that he taught me. Because I worked on bat, you know, I've known him for 25 years, and he was really, like I said, he was close friends with me, and we talked pinball all day at work, you know, even when we weren't on a game together, and you know, outside of work for decades, you know, and uh, that that was such a huge influence on the stuff I brought to this game on that risk and reward was just that, like I said, the stuff that he taught me, because it was stuff that excited me the most about the games he'd done recently, you know, was all the risk, like ACDC was like you know one of the best risk and reward games probably ever. So, how does Lyman affect this game? He's not even here, but he is here. Yeah, the influence. And here, and here it comes. That shot, that left eject shot, if you put a ball, yeah. I don't think you even know this yet. Oh, well, when you have two on the cradle? No. Yeah. If you put a ball on your right flipper and it's cradled, if you let go and flip quickly, it will, most of the time it's going to go up the right orbit. But when it doesn't, it's going to hit that gold finger target and it's going to ricochet as homage. I didn't even know that one. To I Lyman, try that, yeah. And it will go over there about 50% of the time. And it's like, oh, when that happens, it is so cool. You know what? Um, I was preparing for today, and I was uh, uh, just going over all the rules again, and it happened to me. And I did it over and over again. So the game has been out, for, I've been working on this game for year. two years. Yeah, you've been right? out two years, Does yeah. anybody know what I just did? Has anybody experienced you guys know exactly that, you that, that you could do that? This gentleman did, that you could yeah. backhand that target and it would go over. So that is how, if you want to get a ball into the left eject, yeah. you could either shoot it directly or you could... Um, yeah, or collect a bunch of smart missiles and just bang or it you could use, yeah. or, <laughs> or you could use the Lyman maneuver. Yeah. Um, anybody have any questions about the gameplay? Because we're running low on time, unfortunately. So, okay, so you start the game with one free one. It's like, hey, we give you a taste of one, now go earn the rest, right? So right now, the way to earn them is if you finish a mode, you will get one for completing a mode. Um, you also will get one each time you do a skill shot for the first time you did that skill shot. Uh, only the super skill shots, the top lane ones, that will give you uh, advance you bonus X for getting a top lane skill shot. But the ones where you have to plunge, hold the flipper and plunge around, the first time you get any of those those super skill shots, I like to call them, you will get a smart missile, but you can't get another one off that same skill shot for the rest of the game. Coming in the future, the Spectre weapon, weapon perks will probably play into that. Right now, you could hold four in your holster. There's an adjustment that lets you hold more. Don't turn it to nine. It's too easy. Do you? Um, but you can adjust that. <laughs> um, I, we, can't, we can't put a time on it because it's a yeah. It, coming but soon. coming soon, I mean, you've seen the pace at which we're doing. I will tell you this one might be a slightly longer than before, but 
You won't have to wait terribly do, long. Do you like martinis? <laughs> oh, wait, that's right. The, yeah, the martini shot. Every <laughs> martini shot. So the martini shot is when you shoot it up the side ramp and it comes, it My, U-turns and comes Mike down. The, is, Mike is the inventor yeah. of the martini shot. So uh, th this is a controversy between us. That gives you a smart missile every time you do a martini shot. A smart missile. Uh, up, to the, up to the limit that's on the, the shot right. screen. Up also, the but you guys probably don't know this, but you can make that martini shot on purpose with the lower left flipper. It's hard. How, how many you people can, knew if this? You, if, you, if you line it up just right, you'll chatter up there. I can do it. I, I can do it, like, not on command, but once so, I practice so it, I I'm, can do I'm it I'm with you. Semi it's hard. And this gentleman here, that's why I fought him. I'm like, this thing Yeah, he's is, like, you can't do it. It's an accident. Is, I'm like, no, I can well, do it. Well, yeah. it, it feels like it's a clunky thing, but it's so rewarding. Yeah. And it's... And, and so the martini shot is if you shoot up this ramp and it doesn't go around, the side, it comes up here up and it side comes down ramp. here. So think of the U-turn on fishtails, which was my inspiration and for making a rule on that. the right ramp. Uh, so you know, I because that happens on my game a lot. Like I'll I'll, I'll it, clunk it up the side because I won't be quite re accurate. And it was coming down. I'm like, oh, I want something for that because it's a happy it a accident and yeah. it's really cool. So you can so and then Mike discovered yeah, I like think, I discovered the yeah, ricochet yeah, I, I shot. I figured out I can make it with the lower flipper. I'm like, oh yeah, now we there's no way that this is not getting an award. Yeah. You know? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> The rule on this game? Oh, I like the whole thing. I want to say, I, I, so this was my largest rule design role on anything I've done at Stern. And Stranger Things, which Lonnie, Brian, and I did as a three-man tag team, um, was my largest one before that. So I'm really proud of the fact that every mode is different in this one, like unique. And especially the wizard modes, I'm, I'm really proud of those. Um, because they, they, like it, that was a bigger challenge to come up with four bigger modes and have them not feel like, oh, it's just another multi-ball, you know? They That's why to. half of them are single ball ones. Right. So uh, I, I can't pick a favorite, but of the four wizard modes, I think the Duel on the Disco Volante is probably my favorite one, which is kind of one of the reasons it ended up being the fourth, the last one we put in, you know? Well, uh, It so also required the most work. Yeah, that, that part is true. I'm, oh, we're taking All too right. long here. We got two minutes. Okay. Any, oh, oh, we yeah. have to give us surprises. Yeah, um... Well, that depends on the on any game. It's whoever how evil the person was that set that up. It could be if you're Jack Danger, you could push it across the room and you'll never even get a warning. <laughs> wow! But, it, but, it, but you know, if you're like Lynn's Arcade, like if is, you sneeze on it, it might tell you. Know, so. Oh my gosh! Okay, here's my question. Yeah. Right. Right. No, only because like those things, those Q things are so lucrative. Like I don't get mad when they roll there because I'm like, oh, I've got a chance at a billion points, which is, might be more than I'm going for from the other thing, you know. Um, but remember, there is yeah. still going to be another ingredient of smart missile that so it might it might not be as big of an issue because you'll have a chance of having a couple more smart missiles. Yeah, yeah. No, no, that's, I've said this before. So Lonnie, he won't probably be mad at me for telling you that, but I've said it. This is not the first time I've said it in public. Um, okay, who is the the one I told you? And I'll I'll defer to you for the other two, if you can remember. Who, 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 My memory is terrible. And you got you got a question real fast. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Right. Yeah, well, if you play right. a mode, like, right. that mode's done until you get through the whole game. No, yeah, you can't play the same one twice. So you can't, you will never accidentally play the same one twice. It's impossible. All right. Um, did you have a favorite question, Lon? <laughs> oh, this gentleman wants a yeah, backlash. We'll, we'll give you uh, one. We'll see yeah. these things if you want. Yeah, um... You know, it's just like uh, uh, when, when, they, when folks ask, folks, gets my age away, right? Yeah. Uh, who uses the word folks? Um, I do. <laughs> uh, yeah, what, what's your favorite game that you've worked on? I don't have a favorite. Uh, I, I like all of them. I liked all of your questions. Can oh, we, I got I got a trivia question trick? real fast. What, okay, I've worked a lot of jobs. Name um, a, a licensed 
title I worked on at two different companies that was the same license. I did not work on any guns in oh, this uh, game. Can I answer yeah, that yeah. question? No, you know the answer <laughs> to it. Yeah. What? what? It was Aerosmith. It was Aerosmith. It was Aerosmith. What was the name of the video game? Uh, Revolution X. Revolution that was the first Revolution thing I worked on at Midway, and then the second thing I worked on at Stern, and my first thing with you was Aerosmith. Yeah. All right. I think so let me. Yeah, but that's it. Before, before you leave. Before oh, wait, anybody else that asked a question, walk up here. I got some stickers mm -hmm. and some pins I'll give you guys just for asking. This uh, is, the, yeah. So this is my plug for Mike. Mike doesn't know this yet. But he's heard me say this to a lot of folks at work. Um, Mike comes to work for us, and he's next door. He sits next door. And I don't know who he is. Uh, I just know um, uh, he's a friend of Lyman, and I've you know, done a ton of games with him. Any event, <clears throat> he says, you know, this rule could be better on KISS if you did X or Y. I'm like, yeah, but I don't think so. <laughs> who are you to tell me that? <laughs> who, are you to know me? who are you to tell me that? Mike didn't just storm off and just go, you know, uh, this guy is just, you know, just he doesn't know what he's talking about. He was just persistent, and um, uh, I, I don't want to say it was invented there, but the game tells you if the rule or the shot or the experience that you're having is fun. It just does. And what he was telling me, or what he wasn't telling me was, it wasn't fun. Let's make it fun. And so ever since that time, you know, sometimes you have to uh, um, do things that are not your ideas. It's, and sometimes Mike's ideas don't make it into the game because the game votes. It vetoes. It has the final vote, right? And that's how we proceed with everything. It's not about me. It's not about Mike. It's not about George. Uh, it's about the game. And uh, and when we, and when the game wins, we all win. So that's my. That's a good way. That's thank you thought. all. Thank you all so much for coming. I'll be in, I'll be in the booth the whole rest of the weekend. I think he'll be here for a little while.